I want to welcome you back to the Sunriser right here on the Hope Channel Uganda. I'm your host, Pastor D.W. West, and we are moving into a completely new series. We just uh, finished a series on soil and what it means to be in the good soil. But today, we are going to start a brand new series this morning. It's called One. And if I was going to name our first session something, I would name it Masterpiece. You see, brothers and sisters, we were created in the image of God, and we are a masterpiece made for a purpose. And if there is only one of us, that means that we have a reason to be, and we also have a purpose that needs to be fulfilled in our lives. Let us have a word of prayer together and we will keep moving on. Amen? Let's pray. Father in heaven, help us to see ourselves and others as a masterpiece that you have made, Father. My prayer is right now as we go into this series that you will pour out your Holy Spirit and that I will speak your words and your words only. Father, hide me behind the very shadows of the cross of Calvary so that I will not be seen nor heard, but that Jesus will be seen and that Jesus will be heard. And Father, we know that if Jesus be high and lifted up on the cross of Calvary, he will draw all people to him. So Father, draw us closer to you, O Lord. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen and amen. Now we're going to be looking at a few different scriptures today. We're going to take a look at Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. We're going to move into Philippians 2 uh, verses 3 to 7, but I'm going to go ahead and and start out and give a nice little introduction here with each and every single one of you. And as we open up this new series on one, we need to kind of have a better understanding of what oneness is. You see, brothers and sisters, It is all very important for us to understand that we must be one in Jesus Christ. We must be one accord in the body of Christ. And we must also understand that we are all one in the fact that we need that grace. We need that salvation in order to make it and get to glory. You see... We all are a masterpiece that has been made in the image of God. He created us to be this masterpiece. And that it is great to have you all here this morning. And as we take a look at this sermon series called One, I want to explore what it's going to look like for us. You see, as believers to live as one, I want to take a look at what that looks like. But first, we need to talk about independence. You see, it's one of the core values that people want. Everybody in the world, they want independence. And and we are taught from an early age to be self-sufficient. We are told to fend for ourselves as this sign of strength and maturity. And it's a preferred trait in, in those who can't go it alone are viewed as weak or at least as less capable than those who actually can. You see, we value independence and individualism above almost everything else, and especially young people, they want to be independent, but we were not created to live this way, and it may feel counterintuitive, but the truth is we are created and called to live in community. Now, let me say it again, only this time, let me make it a little bit more personal. You were created and called to live in a community. In fact, in the book of Genesis, when you go all the way back to the beginning, God creates man and then says it's not good for man to be alone, Genesis 2 verse 18. And not just because he might be lonely or need a buddy, but because God wired us to do life together. Go on and say amen, somebody. He created us and called us to do life as one in community. You see, there's a problem though, and most of us don't want to do this at all. We can't stand one another, and it isn't because we're anti-community. That's not the problem. 
We don't want to do it because we don't understand it. We don't want to do it because we have been trained to do life independently. We don't want to do it because we don't know what we're missing. We don't want to do it because sometimes we just can't stand other people. We don't want to do life in community because we don't know how to do life in community. And as a result, most of us are far too focused on being individuals. In fact, this individualism is robbing us of the joy, strength, hope, grace, and mercy that we are so desperate for. And the only way to break the habit of doing life alone, the only way to experience a life that we were truly meant to live is to learn how to live in and amongst a community. Go on and say amen, somebody. And that's what the next three days is all going to be about. And for the next three days, we are going to explore what it looks like to live life in community, not just a, as a group of different individuals, but we're going to learn what it looks like to live as one. And this is far more important than most of us could ever realize, not just because doing life alone leaves us lacking, but because we are each wonderfully and uniquely created to be a part of a community and through that community to transform our world. Now, this means we must learn to do life together. We must learn to do life with others, even when life with others is difficult. When we learn to do life as a united community, there is nothing that can stop us. Go on and say amen. You see, that's the problem. A lot of times we, we find people to be difficult and we don't want to do life with them. But those people that we find life difficult in, God put them in your life for you so that you can learn how to do life with people that drive you crazy. So if we are going to learn to live in community, we must do life in community. We must transform the world as a community. We need to understand a couple of things about ourselves first, and that's what I want us to explore today. So if you don't mind, let's open up our Bibles, and we're going to go to the book of Ephesians. We're going to go, if you don't mind, to the book of Ephesians. We're going to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. And we are going to look at verse 10, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. The Word of God says this, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. You see, this is work that is pleasing to God. It is not the length of time we labor, but our willingness and fidelity in the work that makes it acceptable to God. In all our service, a full surrender of ourselves is demanded. The smallest duty done in sincerity and self-forgetfulness is more pleasing to God than the greatest work when it is marred with self-seeking. Are you following me? You see, he looks to see how much of the spirit of Christ we cherish and how much of the likeness of Christ our work reveals. He regards more the love and faithfulness with which we work than the actual amount in which we do. So I have a question for you, and that question is, have you ever discovered one of the reasons you struggle co to connect with others is not them, but rather the problem that you struggle with to connect is you? Did you know that you are your biggest problem in life? And it takes some time and some honest thinking. It takes multiple failed relationships. And what's the common denominator for those multiple failed relationships and the multiple jobs ending badly? What is the common denominator? And you can't find a place to, to connect because you never feel like you belong. What? is the common denominator. Now, I'm not saying there are not times others have left us out or have even rejected us. This happens in life. I'm not saying that we have never been the victim of others' hurtful actions, but if we were honest 
Most of the time, when we do not do well in community, it has nothing to do with anybody else and has everything to do with us. And I think it is because we don't understand who or what we are, nor do we understand who or what others are. And if we are going to learn to live in the community, we must learn what we are and what this means for how we live our lives. There's three things I like to live by. That is what you believe, why you believe it, and where is it found? Again, number one, what you believe, why you believe it, and where it's found. So what am I? What are you? And how does this impact my life? Well, I'm going to give you a short answer. You are a masterpiece that was created by God. And how does this impact your life? Well, when you live like a masterpiece, it transforms the world around you instead of you around the world. And that's the point. You are a masterpiece, so we must act like it. That's the one thing I want you to get today. You are a masterpiece. Amen? For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. I wish I had a witness in this place. You see, the word handiwork or workmanship can also be translated as masterpiece. We were, number one, created by God. We were created for God. We were created in the image of God. So how do I act like a masterpiece? Well, number one, you got to live up to your purpose. You are a masterpiece created on purpose for a purpose. And this means that you have a job that you must do because you are God's masterpiece created for good works, which he prepared in advance for you to do. Then you have a job to do. And one of the greatest ways that you can honor God, one of the greatest ways you can live up to your purpose is to do the job you were created to do. And this is really important. And you may be a masterpiece, but if you are not living out your purpose, if you are not doing the job you were created to do, then you are not living up to your value. You are not living up to your potential. In fact, a vintage car, an old car, is a masterpiece. You don't use it to haul um, a bunch of junk around. You don't use it to, to take the soccer team to, uh, or the football team to go play their match. That's why we have vans, right? You don't take an old vintage car to, to haul the football team down to play a match, right? You, you don't take an old vintage classical guitar as a masterpiece and let a child bang on it and, and take it to show and tell. And if you had the original Mona Lisa painting, you wouldn't use it to cover a hole in the wall in the, the back of your bathroom or to paper the bottom of a birdcage, because if it is a masterpiece, you will use it according to its value. And since we are a masterpiece created in the image of God, we need to live up to our purpose. We need to be used for what we were created to be used for. Are you following me? You see, this is why when you look in the Bible, it spends so much time talking about the things Jesus's followers should not do. And God doesn't just want a list of arbitrary rules, but he recognizes that we are masterpieces. He made us and he doesn't want us to ever be devalued. So what is your job. What were you created for? Well, your job, what you were created for is number one, to represent Jesus. And this means how you treat others, how you have conversations, how you manage your time, and how you take care of your body. So if you're going to be a masterpiece, if you're going to live up to your purpose, you need to ask yourself, how am I representing Jesus? You see, you must never think what you're doing does not matter. 
When you represent Jesus, wherever you are, you are living a life of infinite value and purpose. You are doing your job, even if the situation you find yourself in seems incredibly boring and mundane. Your job is to reflect Jesus back to our world. So ask yourself, what are you reflecting? Are you reflecting the light? Are you reflecting the image of Christ? And the second way you act like a masterpiece is this. Number two, you must recognize the value of others. And just like you were created in God's image and are therefore a masterpiece, everybody that you interact with was also made in the image of God. And if everyone else is also a masterpiece, then you have to ask yourself, how am I treating others? I want you to just stop and think about that for just a minute because we love the idea that we are a masterpiece. We love how we are made in the image of God. But if it's true, then understand that everybody else is also made in the very image of God. Somebody go on and say amen. You see, doing life in community only works when we realize that we are made in God's image and when we recognize everybody else is made in his image as well. This is why we can't put the blame on others. This is why we can't be nasty to others because when we do these things, we are being nasty to God himself. In fact, this is why the Bible is not only full of things that we should avoid to help us recognize our value, but it is also full of things that we should do for others a way that we can serve others because God wants us to recognize their value as well. Go on and say amen, somebody. This is why the Apostle Paul wrote these words to one of the communities in the first century. He says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves for not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Philippians 2 verses 3 and 4. So do nothing out of selfish ambition. So don't be doing things to campaign for yourself, manipulating people to get your way. This is not what you're supposed to do. Do nothing out of vain conceit, it's, or selfish ambition and vanity are the status quo for most of our culture today. But for those who follow Jesus, Paul says, no, that's not how a masterpiece treats another masterpiece. Instead, brothers and sisters, we must learn to value others above ourselves. And this is what Jesus did. This is how Jesus lived and he impacted humanity. And when we live like this, we reflect the light. We reflect the image of Jesus back to our world. In fact, Paul follows this up with this. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing of no reputation by taking the very nature of a bondservant. Philippians 2 verses 5 to 7. You see, the way a masterpiece treats another masterpiece is by making yourself a humble servant just like Christ. And to be like Christ, we must act like Christ. And to act like Christ, we must serve like Christ. And do you know the best way to do this? Go back to your purpose. Go back to the job you've been given. Reflect Jesus back to your world by serving others. Young mothers, to your kids, how are you serving them? Husbands, to your wife, how are you serving them? Wives, to your husband, how are you serving them? At your job, how are you serving them? In your neighborhoods, how are you serving them? In the marketplace, how are you serving them? online and social media. How are you serving them? You see, we were created by God and we are a masterpiece and everybody you come in contact with was created by God, which makes them a masterpiece too. Go on and say amen. So if we are going to be one, if we are going to get community right, then we have to recognize that we are all masterpieces and we need to begin to act like it. Go on and say amen.
And so what? What's the takeaway? What do I do with this? Well, I'm going to give you a three-step takeaway today. Step one, pray God will help you to realize that you are a masterpiece. Ask him to reveal it to you. Ask him to show you your value in his eyes. Ask him to help you see yourself the way he sees you. Step number two, ask him to help you see others the way he sees them. Ask him to show you how you can serve those other masterpieces you come in contact with every single day. Step number three, start serving. Don't wait for the perfect time. Don't wait until you feel like it. Serve. Brothers and sisters, if we are going to find unity, and be one, then it is important to recognize ourselves and others as the masterpieces God created us to be. Brothers and sisters, I don't know what you're going through, but Christ has called us. He has called us to love one another. He has called us to be good to one another. He has called us to be one in the body of Jesus Christ. And in order to do that, we have to realize we were all made in the very same image. And that is our biggest problem, is that we let ourselves get in the way. So tonight, I want to appeal to you, watching this morning, I want to appeal to you. And my appeal to you this morning is this. I am asking you to make a decision to get out of the way of the Holy Spirit working in your life. Get out of the way of the Holy Spirit working. Allow the Holy Spirit to work through you, to convert you, and to convict you to love one another, to help one another, to serve one another. And if this is something that you want to do, there's going to be a phone number that's going to pop up on the screen. You can call this phone number or you can text this phone number. And if you want to make a decision today that you want to be one in Christ, that you want to serve like Christ, that you want to be like Christ, then you can make that decision on the telephone number that's going to pop up on the screen. Let's have a word of prayer together. Father in heaven, we thank you and praise you for this time that we have had here on the Sunriser. And Father, my prayer is as we continue through this day, that you will remind us that we were all created in the image of God and that we must love one another and treat one another with respect. Father, help us to be good to one another and to remind one another that we are all one in Christ, that we all need your grace. We all need your salvation for your grace is sufficient enough for us, Father. And we all are one in the need of of your grace and your mercy and your love. Father, forgive us in the areas where we fail you and strengthen us in those areas so that we can go out and win many more souls to Jesus Christ. Father, we're going to be sure to give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise as we pray all these things in Jesus' precious name. Let everybody say amen and amen. Well, again, thank you for joining me this morning on the Sunriser. I pray that you have a wonderful day today, that the Lord will give you peace and grace. And we'll see you tomorrow morning again on the Sunriser at 7 a.m. God bless.